Hey guys, welcome to another Python tutorial for beginners. So in our last three videos, we've learned about the Python errors, exceptions, and exceptions handling. And also, we had an example of how to implement the exceptions handling in the unit conversion program. So in this video, before we finalize the errors for Python, I'd like to go over how to use the debugging tools provided by PyCharm. And these debugging tools are usually available in most of the IDEs that you are using. So let's get into this. So let's first start this video by asking what is debugging. So the term debugging as the name says it, we are trying to identify and fix any bugs that we find while we program. And as a programmer, you will often face bugs or issues that is hard to identify and fix. And in this case, programmers would need a way to analyze each line of code and see which line or which variable is causing that issue. And so in order to debug, we can use any built-in debugging tools if we are using IDEs like this PyCharm. And this debugging tool usually allows the programmers to set up a breakpoint to pause the program during its execution so that we can easily identify what is happening behind the scene when the program is being executed. So this may sound a bit confusing for now, but let me try to show you some examples so that we can understand better. So the first thing that I'm going to show you is an order of execution. So we've learned that Python's interpreter interprets the code from top to bottom. So let's see whether this is really the case by creating multiple breakpoints and run the program in a debug mode using the unit conversion program from the last video which I have here. So then now I'm going to set some breakpoints in this program so that we can actually run this program in a debug mode. So let me scroll to the bottom. And then the first breakpoint that I'm going to set is at the line 61 where we actually call this program, the convert unit function. So in order for you to set the breakpoint, you can actually click the space next to the line number here. Then you will see a red dot. And let me also put some multiple breakpoints within the convert unit function. So I can put it at the user input and then the if statement as well as the number from unit and to unit. And let me not forget this new if statement here, else the converted value, and then the result. And let's also put some breakpoints in the get user input function so that we can actually see what user is entering from the console. So number from unit and to unit. And just for your information, when you want to debug a program like this, you shouldn't set this many breakpoints all over the places. I'm just doing this to show you the order of execution for this program. So then now, let's try to run this program in a debug mode. And for that, we can click this uh, green bug icon that we have here next to the green play icon. So whenever I click this, then now we are at the debug mode. And this debug mode will automatically stop its execution every time there is a breakpoint. So I have my first breakpoint here at line 61. So the first breakpoint starts from the function call because this function call is actually the initial trigger to run this unit conversion program. And we can move to the next logical breakpoint by clicking this uh, green region button here. So when I click this, we'll go to our first breakpoint within this convert unit function at the user input variable. So then let me click the region button once again. Then this time, we're going to be at the get user input function and then we will actually stop right before we execute the menu. And because we haven't run this menu just yet, if we look at the console now, you will actually see the print message coming from the line number 5 here, but you will not see the message coming from this input function, choose an option from the menu, because we haven't executed this menu line just yet. And when I click the region button again to execute the menu input function, now the debugger will actually pause. So if you look at the debugger tab, the debugger has paused because it is waiting for the user input, meaning it is waiting for me to actually give an option here. So if I select the option one here and type enter, then the debugger will continue with the next breakpoint, which is number. And then it's going to do the same thing for the from unit and to unit. So then let me actually enter all the values here for the number from unit and to unit. So I'm going to click the region button once again. Then I just executed the number here. So I'm going to put the number 12. And then same thing. Uh, from unit is a kilometer. And then I'm going to click the play button once again. And to unit is a meter. Then once we put all the required user input from the get user input function, we are done with this function call, the user input variable. So then now we are back to the convert unit function to proceed to the next lines of code, which is at the if statement. And this if statement will check whether the user input is none. And if it is not none, so we are skipping this if statement. So if I click the region button once again, then it will go to the next if statement. Then now this time it's checking whether the user input menu key is equal to two. 
and the menu we actually put one here so it's gonna skip this as well so let me click the uh, region button once again then now it's extracting the number from unit and to unit from the user input dictionary that we got from the get user input function so let me just keep clicking the region button and then you can actually see the values coming out to the right in a gray text and then this time we are actually checking whether the from unit and to unit is within the standard unit mapper that we have defined here and we put the kilometer here and meter here so both of them are in there so it's going to skip this if statement and then it's going to come to the else block and then we're going to perform the unit conversion here and once we got the value we're going to format the result and then uh, we are back to the top again because we have a while loop here and if you look at the console you can actually see the result being printed out in a pretty format because uh, this print statement was run so even though we didn't have a breakpoint here this was automatically executed because the last breakpoint that we had for this function was at the result not at the print statement okay so we've just walked through the order of execution for this program now let's take a look into PyCharm's debugger. So when we first get into the debugging mode by clicking this green bug icon here, the first thing that you will see is a frame. And this frame will show you all the variables that you've set in the scope that you are currently in. So initially, since I haven't invoked this convert unit function just yet, it shows you the variable and functions that exist within this script. So the standard unit mapper is showing up here because we've defined them at the global level right here within this script and also if we go into the special variables then you can see the get user input as well as the convert unit function that we have defined within this script and if I move to the next breakpoint then you will see a new frame that says convert unit and this frame will be responsible for holding variables for this function so if I resume once again then now this time you will see a new frame for the get user input and this new frame will actually hold all the variables that we create within this function. So if I click the region once again to actually execute the line of menu, then you will see a menu prompted in the console and I can type one here. And if I go back to the debugger, then now in the get user input uh, frame, you will see a menu variable with a value that I just entered. And we can do the same thing for the number from unit and to unit. So let me just resume this and then put the number here 12 and resume kilometer then resume once again and to the meter and if I go back to the debugger now in the get user input frame you will see a four variables being set from unit menu number and to unit with a value that I just entered and in here not only we can see all the variables that we just created with the data that we just entered but we can also edit the data so for example, the from unit, I want to change to a centimeter, then I can just set the set value here by right clicking this variable and then type a string and then put centimeter here and type enter. Then now this from unit is changed to a centimeter and we can check that by clicking the resume button once again, then we are at the return. So let me click it once again. Then now we are back at the convert unit function because the user input, the get user input function actually returned the data and we created a user input variable within the convert unit frame. So if I uh, open this, then you can actually see that the from unit is changed to a centimeter uh, from the kilometer that I just entered from the console here. Okay, then now let's look into the step over functionality. So to look at the step over functionality, I've removed all the breakpoints that we've had in this program by clicking the red dot once again. And now I'm going to only set one breakpoint at the beginning of the convert unit function so that we can actually see the step over functionality. So in here, I'm going to set it at the try and then let me get into the debug mode. And with this one breakpoint, instead of me actually clicking the play icon to move to the next breakpoint, this time let me actually try to click the step over icon. So this step over icon allow you to move to the next lines of code without stepping into any of the function call that we have in the convert unit function. So we have a user input function here and when I click the step over, it will actually go to the user input line and then when I click the step over once again, then it's going to automatically execute this get user input function without actually stepping into the get user input function itself. So if I look at the console, this get user input function is awaiting for my data here. 
So I'm going to type 1 as the menu and 12 as the number, kilometer as the from unit, and meter as the to unit. And now we are done with the get user input function. We can proceed to the lines below by keep clicking the step over icon. And if I keep clicking it, it's going to go to the next logical lines of code. And now it's getting the number from unit and to unit from the user input variable. And it's going to check the if statement. And then it's going to forge the else block and then do the unit conversion here and then format the result. And then at the end, it's going to print the result. So if I click the step over one last time, then it's going to go to the top of the code because we have a while loop here. And if you look at the console, you can actually see that the result was being printed out with all the values that we have entered. So this step over functionality allows us to move to the next line of code without stepping into any of the function code that we have within the function. And the starting point for step over is determined by where you set the breakpoint at. So if I set the breakpoint inside the get user input function, it's going to actually step over all the lines of code inside the get user input function. But in this case, we only set one breakpoint at the convert unit function. So in this case, it's not going to go into the get user input function, but it's going to keep stepping over all the lines of code that we have in the convert unit function. Okay, so then now let's try to talk about the step into functionality. So as the name says it, step into will allow us to step into any of the function or the method call that we have within the function that we are working in. So let me show you an example here. So let me run the debug mode. And there is a step into icon right here. So if I keep clicking this step into, then we are now at the user input. So if I click the step into once again, then it actually steps into the function that we are calling in the convert unit function. So if I keep clicking the step into within the get user input function, let's see what happens. So now we have a menu and then we are actually calling the input function here. So if I click the step into once again, then now we are actually at the Python module. We stepped into that function that we called from here. So if I keep clicking the step into here, it's going to keep stepping into all the functions and method calls that we are using in this module. But if there is no function call, then step into will behave exactly identical to step over, meaning it will just move to the next line of code as you click the step into. So let me show you that example here. So let me stop this and then rerun the debugger. And then let me just step over so that we can just bypass this get user input. And then, so I need to put the, all the data here. So 12 kilometer and meter. And now we are at the line number 34. So we just uh, pass the get user input. So if I click the step into, then it's going to behave exactly identical to step over because we do not have any function calls uh, other than the get user input that we have here. So if I just keep clicking it, then it's going to go to the last lines of code, which is a print result. And then you can see the console that the result was printed out. And now we are back at the top again because we have a while loop here. Okay, so then let's talk about the step into my code. And as the name says it, this is very similar to step into. But the only difference here is that we only want to step into the function or method that we've created, not the function or method from Python's module. So in this new iteration, if I click the step into my code, which is this icon here, Let's see what happens. Now we just step into the get user input function because get user input function is wrote by me. It's not the Python module. So let me just keep clicking this. Now we are at the menu. So let me just try to execute this by clicking this once again. This time it didn't actually go to the Python module, meaning the parse.py, but instead it actually threw the user prompt once again. So I'm going to select one as the menu. And then same thing, I can just step into my code number and 12 from unit is a kilometer and to unit is a meter. And then I can just step into once again to return it. And now we are back at the line number 34 within the convert unit function. So the only difference between the step into versus the step into my code is that step into my code will not step into any of the Python function or method. And this step into my code can be especially useful when you want to only step into and debug the code that you wrote. Okay, so then now let's try to talk about the step out function. 
So as some of you may have guessed, this step out is the reverse action of the step into. So let me show you an example. So I'm going to run the debugger. And then I'm going to step into the get user input function that we have here. So if I step into it, now we are at the get user input function. But uh, from now, let's say that you want to actually step out from this function that we just step into. In this case, you can click the step out. And what this will do is that it's going to execute all the lines of code that we have in the get user input function instead of walking through the code line by line. So let me just click this. And if you go to the console, this console is now waiting for my user input because it executed all the lines of code that we have here. So for the menu, I can put 1, 12, kilometer, and meter. And now we are back at the convert unit function and the get user input function was already executed. And same thing, uh, if we want to just get out from the convert unit function, meaning if we just want to execute all the code that we have in this function without walking through the code line by line, then we can click the step out once again. And then it will instantly execute all the lines of code that we have here. And then you are seeing the result in this print statement right here. And you are also seeing the new prompt because it's just running the user input once again within the while loop. Okay, so we are almost done here. So the last thing that I want to talk about in this video is the evaluate. So let me show you an example here. So let me just step over the get user input. And then in the console, I'm going to type some data, meter. And now we are back at the convert unit function. So let me go to debugger. And now we have the user input variable that we created right here. And from here, we can actually try to evaluate uh, this user input variable that we have uh, using our custom expression. So you see this calculator icon here. So when you click this, you can actually write your own custom expression in this slot using the variable that you put right here. So for example, I can say user input get, and then I want to get the value of the menu right now. And if I type enter, then you will see the result equal to one because the menu value is one. And I can do the same thing. So if I type from unit here and then type enter, then the result will be the kilometer because the from unit in this dictionary is a kilometer. And I can also try to get the key that does not exist in the user input. So user input get, and I'm going to say new menu. And if I type enter, it's going to return none because if you call the get method on the dictionary object, and then if the key does not exist, then it's going to return none by default. And we can also do the same thing by uh, clicking this plus icon here. So in here, I can just do user input get, and then I want to get the value of menu once again, type enter. Then this time it's going to return one. But the only difference here uh, between the plus button and then the calculator icon is that the plus button will actually allow you to see the expression that you just entered in this variable section so that you can actually refer back to it while you are debugging. And also you can delete the expression that you just created by clicking the minus icon here. Okay guys, that's it for this video. So we have now completed all the basics about Python errors and error handling. So from our next video, we'll get into file handling so that we can learn about different operations that we can perform using different types of file. And if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to comment down below. And please don't forget to subscribe and like my channel. Thanks for watching and hope to see you next video.